Yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll just introduce you now, mate. Um, for everyone watching, thanks for tuning in. We've had a little break over Chrissy and uh, New Year's, but we're back with Crown Chat. I'm Mark and this is Damien. Hello. And we have all the way from LA, uh, Louis Lewis Lombardi. Hey, how we doing? Good. And um, Louis, you've done a uh, million uh, little roles. I was um, in the email I sent you, the first thing I remember seeing you in was uh, The Usual Suspects. Yeah, that was one of my, actually one of my first films. And how I got that role was kind of funny because I went to Sundance Film Festival. And uh, is that you guys moving that? Yeah, yeah, we just moved it aside. Oh. Better see yeah, that's all good. I was like, I, was like, I messed this up already. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what I did was when I was at Sundance Film Festival, uh, when my first film Amongst Friends was there, that's how I started. I did this independent film in New York City. Uh, we drove up. Mira Savino was one who cast me in the film before anything. No one. This is like 1990. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, and she was nobody. Nobody. We, we all just met on this independent New York film. She ended up cast. She cast me in the film. We drove. To this, the film kind of got picked up to go to Sundance Film Festival. Now, this, I don't know if you're familiar with Sundance Film Festival. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's 1993. Before it was like the Sundance Film Festival. You know, it was a real film festival. Yeah. Like. Like, like the guys who came out the year we did were like Robert Rodriguez, uh, Brian Singer. So it's still uh, very indie, like even more. Very, so. Right. Today it's more of the film market, like yeah. AFM is. But back then you had independent film people making films with their mom's credit cards. But anyway, we did, we, we did this film in New York. Two years later, the director's like, hey, it's going to Sundance. People were like, what's that? I'm from the Bronx. You know, yeah. but I was doing a lot of NYU films, a lot of NYU in New York, you know, at 18, 19, you know, like my, I started doing this since I'm 13 and I would do NYU films and then independent films in New York, so blah, 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 blah. Long story short, 1991 or two, we did this independent film. Two years later, the film is going to the Sundance. So I drive to Sundance with Mira Savino. We're in the car. The number is nothing. It's like, we're just driving to a film festival with our yeah. little independent film. We get to Sundance, and the film is a massive, massive hit. Like, massive. Yeah, wow. And we're like, wow, how cool is this? And and that's how Mira Savino got her fame. Oh, Robert really? Redford. This was amongst friends, Louis? Yes, yeah. exactly. Look at you. Did your homework, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give you an A. <laughs> but yes, exactly. Amongst friends. And, and, and when we did that film, it was nothing. That's why you, when people go... Oh, I got a little role, or it's a little movie. I tell them, ever, don't ever say that or just get out of the business. Yeah. Because a little tiny thing can lead to a massive snowball career. And that's what's happened with me. Every time I do a little role or a little something, it turns into a TV series or a movie or a bigger project next. Even if I show up with no lines or no anything, it ends up turning out to be huge. So wait, go back to the Sundance Film Festival. Our film is in competition with Brian Singer's first film. You never heard of it's called Public Access. It was an independent film at yeah, Sundance, that. and that's how we and that's how we became friends, me and Brian Singer. And we uh, like I don't really know him, like you know I know him from Sundance. So yeah. and when he went back to L.A., his film and our film were in competition at the festival, you know, and our his film beat our film out. So we became friends, he and I, and me and the other dude. And when I got back to LA, he said, hey, I'm doing another movie. You want to be in it? We were like, what is it? Usual Suspects. And that's how we got in that. Yeah, right. And, uh, yeah. That's a classic, isn't it? Um, yeah. Did you, yeah. Louis, did you have an inside? Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. And, and you know the other, wait, you know the other big guy that's in the, in the, amongst friends with me? Who's that? The guy, the Vic and Eddie, the weed deal. You know the guy who's in the movie with me? The other guy, the heavy guy. Me and him were partners in Amongst Friends. Yeah, yeah. Did you see Amongst Friends? Uh, I saw it a long, long time ago. <laughs> well, there's two characters in it. Me and the other dude, the big guy, you know, with a weed dealer. We're like, hey, we got to get it. We got to get it. Yeah. And that turned out Brian Singer made me and him the cops and usual suspects. Oh, he's so my he's partner. Your partner in the cop yeah. car. Yeah. And I've done like six movies with that guy. Oh, really? So you got a few yeah. more ones than him in the scene you guys were in. <laughs> yeah, but that was him. Me and Brian put both of us oh, in it. Oh, cool. So. Yeah, I didn't recognize him from that. Yeah, you just don't know. Like, that's my point is, that, you know, and, and like, like again, it goes back to me explaining to you, like, with young talent, young people, how do you get in the business, right? 
people say that now today it's so much harder. You can't get agents, you can't get managers. It's kind of harder for younger people in, in, to get into business. Yeah. So you must create your own world. You must go out. You can shoot movies with your iPhone. You could do you could do them on your iPad. You can get certain. You can get a camera, a GoPro, and shoot movies. You got to kind of create your own vehicle these days. If yeah. you don't, you're, you're going to be way back. No one's going to push you. That's the way the business has changed. You know, from yeah, when I started. Was it um, was it Aaron Sorkin that just did one on his phone completely? I think so. A bunch yeah. of people. And so he sort of proved to everyone, look, you don't need all this fancy equipment. I shot a whole right. a whole movie on my iPhone. <laughs> yeah, and then you can edit, and then you could go plug it right into your Mac or any of these editing softwares, and you could do everything. You remember, yeah. nothing's on film anymore. It hasn't been for twenty years. Yeah, you know, right. very little stuff. Well, I guess you know, look, look at the success we've had in uh, the podcast with just a couple of microphones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys are just, I, I thought I would, you know, I, yeah. You've, you've heard of us over there, have you, Lou? Yeah, I heard we're a big deal yeah. in Los Angeles. Yeah, Los Angeles, are we? <laughs> yeah, Stallone was telling me, the guy in the back, he was yeah. telling me about the podcast. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, he's, so he's on next story. week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ben, I bet I better step up my game because I don't want to be well, jumping. Well, he wanted phone. to be on this week, and we picked you over him. Yeah. So, yeah, look, my Stallone shirt. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Rocky. Yeah, he'll, he'll appreciate that. Yeah, he'll love that. Go to the slice. Go to the slice Stallone shop. You can buy all his merchandise. It's insane. He's oh, got the hat sure. signed in a box. He's got the, the 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 boxing trunk signed. I mean, he's got a great. It's the slice. It's called. The, the Sly Stallone shop. It's on Instagram. Uh, cool. Man, that guy, up in the that guy created for, it, for sure. Hey, what's your yeah, he, while we're on that? What's your favorite Rocky? Oh, I would say uh, the first one and the one with Mr. T, Clever Lang, Part yeah. Three. I think it was three, right? Yeah. yeah. Clever Lang was my favorite Rocky character. He was you know that guy. Was I just saw, actually, I just saw a photo <laughs> pop up on um, it's the members only Sopranos Instagram of. Jim Gandolfini and Clubber Lang together at a sporting game. Oh my God! Yeah. Really, oh my yeah, God! Said the two T's together. <laughs> but but he but that was definitely funny. That was definitely funny with the uh, Clubber Lang thing. I, I, I like how he was this mean to everyone. Shut up, fool! Yeah. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up, old man! At, at the press, press conference was one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> yeah oh yes exactly right yeah, yeah he was brilliant because i i didn't really know him f the first thing i ever seen him in was rocky three i didn't know him from the a team because i watched it as a kid and um yeah, oh really the first thing i ever seen him in uh which yeah he was brilliant <laughs> yeah rocky he was great one of my favorite rocky characters was that guy yeah, the they had um a few years ago do you know uh sly's brother frank uh, I know him a little bit, yeah. He's yeah, a they, had, they had him out in Australia and he did a concert. Um, oh, wow. He with He's all pretty his, good. Um, Rocky music. <laughs> oh, really? Was he a singer or like an orchestra man? Um, well, he no, did, no, he, he sings. He gets yeah, up he like Elvis. a lot of the songs, or I think so, from the Rocky soundtracks and stuff. Um, I think he oh, was they know he didn't. Music. I don't think he did, but but he's definitely a singer. I yeah, went he's to got a band like, or club. something. I got to, maybe not, but yeah, I got told he had something to do with the music and the Rockies. But he's definitely got his own band. And um, yeah, well, yeah. well, I, well, I, well, I went, I've seen him a bunch of times out here. You know, yeah. I've seen him. Like I've went to a bunch of his concerts and stuff. You know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Cool, yeah. Cool. Well, some radio hosts organized it, and um, yeah, they packed they packed the shows out, so it was pretty cool. <laughs> He came out with his Rocky shorts and drove on. Sorry? He came out with his Rocky shorts <laughs> and he drove on. I, I think he would have, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> How did you find you were just in um, Brisbane for a little while? How did you find it? Oh, uh, I found it nice, but I was in lockdown for two weeks out of the three weeks I was there. And then I went to set and shot three episodes in one day, and I was gone like within a week, you know? I was only out a week there. Right, so for the people I, listening that don't know, you were here shooting the TV series, which is basically, it's sort of like a biopic of The Rock, isn't it? The Young Rock, yeah, about his life growing up, which I found to be extremely fascinating. Yeah. When I got there, I didn't know what to expect. I'm like, how is this guy doing a TV show about his life? And then, man, it, when I got there, I didn't realize his, his, his like, his depth into the wrestling world was with his dad. Yeah, his dad was like, yeah, 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 yeah. My God, his dad was called uh, Rocky. 
and he was that's where he probably got the rock from rocky um, Martin, hey, yeah. he was, was that, he's and the guys who and the guys who brought him up right were andre the giant uh the samoan brothers the wrestlers uh uh, oh my God, Ric Flair, like all these wrestlers were like his dad. Yeah. Mm. Like so they were his dad's friends. They were he, like, it, he had to leave Hawaii, uh, I think, where he was living and moved. <clears throat> did he move to Texas or something when he was younger? I think like Pennsylvania or somewhere. And, uh, yeah, I saw a video of him the other day giving a bloke a truck that um, had taken him in. Basically. That's, that, well, that's his stunt guy. Uh, oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. So who's, and, playing, and Conaway, who's playing the younger version of The Rock, Louis? There's three different versions. There's there's a five year old, a uh, fifteen year old, a twenty one year old. So there's different ones. Yeah, yeah, got ya, got ya. And what's your role? But, but his, I play I play the uncle. He I guess at fifteen he worked at a pizzeria. Yeah. And and I I play the uncle who, who owned the pizzeria, and all I do is give him shit. The two kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It was one of the most fun roles I've done. Those people were great to work with. They were so unbelievable. I mean, <clears throat> I love it. I hope the show goes for 10 years for them. And, and they're all great people. They're hysterical. They're, I don't know. I just love doing it. It was a, a long journey for one day's work, but I totally loved it. I would go back in a minute. And next time, hopefully, I get, you know, because when I was there, I was locked in a room. I was in downtown yeah. Brisbane. How did you find so the I, been... I had a mate that just did the quarantine when he got back from the States. And, um, yeah, he found it very difficult. It was very difficult. I agree with him and everybody I spoke to. It's extremely difficult, that quarantine. Yeah. There extremely. So your buddy, in there? What? Everyone wearing hazmat suits and whatnot. Like them being, no, but you have the no. military, the cops. I mean, you, you're like you're in a hotel room where you can't open the door. You can't go out. You can't do anything. It's kind of, But you know what? If they're keeping their people safe, God bless them. Whatever you got to do. Yeah, you know? Australia, We're, I'll give them credit. They've done, we've done pretty well, I guess, with it. Um, cases a lot. I give them a thousand, them a thousand percent credit. You know, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's hard what they do, but to contain people from dying and, and avoid, you know, just the stuff that's going on everywhere else. I give Australia a lot of credit for. Even if you have to go there, you have to prepare yourself for that. Uh, you have to prepare yourself for that. For that, yeah. I got to tell you, quarantine is brutal. Hell I'm. I'm in... I don't. Really, I don't really go out anyway. When I'm in LA, I'm always home. Like yeah. I, I just stay home. I don't really go out. I don't drink. I really don't do anything. So I'm used to staying home. But when I got there, I mean, you can't go out of a 300 square foot room for two weeks. Yeah, pretty. Fun. You know, and the food is the same. They, they, the food. What they do with the food is uh, ridiculous. They give the first week of food as they give you, right? And the second week of quarantine, they give you the same food. Uh, so you it's like, like what second you change? Thing? They give you what? the same thing every day, or they give you the first week they have a set menu, right? Yeah. The second week comes around, you get the first week set menu again, the same food from the week first week. Got yeah. So Louis, is because of quarantine, was that why you had to come up with uh, Lombardo's food? Because the food was <laughs> in quarantine. I should have brought my hot pot to the to the uh, room. I would have been cooking in there. Like, good <laughs> but if Britain, when they cut the garlic, that would have been me. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about that? About what? Uh, your Lombardi's food venture. Um, oh yeah, you know I launched you, I launched this food. That off? Well, I launched that food line a few years back. It was in a bunch of stores. Uh, we, we got into a lot large marketing, so I, I kind of reestablished it like about a year ago, and now we're working on finding, uh, we're working on relaunching it now, which is going to be kind of cool. It's something I love doing. It's totally a passion. You know, the whole brand's message is bringing families back to the dinner table, mm -hmm. you know? You know, yeah, and we, we, we started this crowdfunding platform called WeFunder that we have it up on, and people can call and be a, oh, you can, you can, invest in it whether it's a little bit or a lot and you can own a piece of the company like it's five hundred dollars to a million dollars you can invest in it but what happens is is you become a brand ambassador you become part of the company you know what i'm saying which is kind of cool and people have been putting in five hundred a thousand a couple you know all kinds of like little monies and what happens is like i said you see the stuff on the store shelves you go, you're more likely to buy because you're the owner of the company. You become a brand ambassador, which I find, I kind of find to be amazing. Yeah. And will you know, it ship internationally eventually? 
Well, yeah, hopefully we are. And right now I'm working on a frozen pizza that we're about to develop right now and get out on QVC and Amazon and, and, uh, and, and a bunch of markets now. That's going to be one of the first steps of it. You know, I created this frozen pizza line. Yeah, which is going to be great. You know, because I make pizza every night. I make my own doughs. I make everything. I make I cook every night, actually. And not just pizza, but I make everything. I make everything. I love cooking. If you, you know? ever got into acting, do you reckon you maybe would have been a chef? Or? I would have probably owned 100 restaurants because it's what I love. Yeah. Again, this is not like, – like the food line is so easy and it's organic because I don't get out there going, what do I got to say? You put me in a room with 1,000 people, I'll tell you, I, I just – when it comes to food and, and I, I, you know, there's no rehearsing. There's, 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 it's just passion. You know, I grew up with all Italian women in the Bronx. All we did was cook and eat around the table our whole lives. All our friends, all our families, everybody. The whole, the whole Bronx where I grew up revolved around food, whether it's the holidays, uh, birthdays, funerals, you know. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, people sit around the table where we grew up, you know. And that's what I'm finding is, is a lost art. I want people, I want I want to get families to come sit back down with their kids, teach them how to cook, sit around the dinner table once a week, get that family bond back that we don't have anymore. Yeah, it's definitely necessary. So often now you see the kids will all have their iPads out watching you know, TV and um, yeah, it's not what it used to be. <laughs> yeah, it well that's in a little well, bit. That, well, I, I got I got a restaurant, I'm a well, I'm a chef, Louis, and so many kids oh, just wow. sit at the table with their just running their iPads and, and iPhones and whatnot. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit disrespectful to tell you the truth. It's horrible. Out there. It's, it's horrible. And when we go out, I see that and I tell my daughter, look how horrible that, look at that. Where's yeah. the interaction? You know, talk to your kids. You know what the problem with today's society is? Here's parenting today. Okay. Here's parenting. Parenting is here's an iPhone. Here's McDonald's. Shut the fuck up. I worked all day. I don't want to hear your problem yeah. to their kid. Yeah. <laughs> Even no, garbage. 100%. They don't get me they, wrong. I do that they, when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> well, they feed them, well, they feed them garbage, right? Which just fucks up their mind and their health physically. Then they give them an iPad, which brainwashes them and mentally fucks them up totally, correct? Oh, that TikTok. So now, Fucking hell. What, what, and, and then, they, and then, when, then, then when the kid wants to talk or express a feeling or a problem or an issue they're having, the parents don't want to hear it. So it locks the kid in. Yeah. So now the kid is eating horribly. He's watching shit on YouTube, can't get his face out of a fucking iPad or an iPhone, and he has no outlet to complain to his mom. So that's why there's so much depression and sadness between the food, between everything we're doing to our children these days, the social media, the food, and not parents not parenting anymore. It's totally destroying our society. And you know, I grew up with my mother. I grew up with all women in my house. We were always, even if we yelled at each other, you know, we're all Italian, so that's how we talk, as you can tell. <laughs> You guys are like, hey, Louis, stop yelling. I'm not yelling. I'm in a great mood. You know? it's, it's, yeah, it's just <laughs> communication. <laughs> yes, but this is the way we communicate. And if you had a problem, when you something happened, you go home, you say, Ma, what the blah, blah, blah. And, and it's over. You release the tension. Yeah. Release yeah, 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 yeah. it. These days, these days, parents are like, I worked all day. I, I can't hear you. And, and the kid sits there afraid to say shit. Yeah. You know? So I think I think my, my whole food motto and my whole food brand is about bringing family back to the dinner table. Talk to your kids, teach them how to cook, sit one night a week, eat with your family two, three, four nights a week, you know, and just express, express what life is going on and what's happening, you know? And, and it don't have to be gourmet meals, bro. I can make stuff that any restaurant makes for $5. I make, I make everything from enchiladas to pastas to sushi to pizzas, everything. I'm not like a one-trick pony cook. Oh, I make Italian food. No, I make anything. Mm. You know, I make Chinese food in my house. I make sushi. I make Mexican food. I make everything. Is you know? Italian your favorite cuisine? Cuisine. Look at you with the big word. Whoa. <laughs> he looks like this that before he came food. on, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Again, Who the fuck let this it? guy out of the box? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Let me let me put my ass on. The cuisine is great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, Italian food is great. But no, I love all kinds of food. I'm a food lover. Yeah. You know, I love all kinds of food. I do. I love pizza. My favorite food. Yes. Yeah. You know, is chicken parmesan my favorite food? Yes. But is sushi my favorite food? Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah right. You know, it's, it's again. What about I try sushi to teach pizza? Daughter, what? What about a sushi pizza? Just go crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. They make it on the internet. <laughs> I saw it. But you know what? I found great pizza in Brisbane. There was a place 
in that mall where I was staying downtown Brisbane at this hotel, right? Yeah. And then the lady's husband worked there. It was an Italian place in that mall where the Woolworths is, where uh, like two blocks from my hotel. Oh my Queen God. Street I mall, I think it's called. What is it? Is it Queen Street Mall or something like that? It's the big mall. I was staying at a hotel called the Alec Perry. Yeah, yeah. And right across, there's a big mall with all these restaurants, a supermarket in it. It was great. I went there every day. I love that mall. All the food places, the shopping. I would go to Woolworths every day and shop through the grocery store. I had a kitchen in my room, so I would cook every night in my hotel. Mm. You know, I love that. I ate out a few nights, but I actually like, you know, I don't want to, I don't like the situation of eating now, like the quarantine eating. You know, yeah. put your mask on. It kind of takes the fun away from no, socializing. And, mm. yeah. You know, to me, food, to me, food is not to eat to get full. To me, food is I want to sit with you guys for an hour and laugh and bust balls and, and talk about everything. You know, it's a, it's the, 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 the dinner table to me is not as much about the food as well as it is the camaraderie of people. Yeah, yeah the holiday. You know, it don't, matter, it don't matter what race, creed, color, where you're from, what you like. If you can enjoy food with people, that's my whole goal. And I want to try when the food line goes. I want to really go out there and try to feed kids. I want to attach single mom charity to the to the food line. You know, I want to try to feed kids, you know, underprivileged kids, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. And go to and go to some of these schools and some of these places where the kids don't have anything and cook with them and teach them and get on this, you know, kind of do that. So mm -hmm. my food brand goes, I'm gonna do a lot like that. You know, I'm gonna yeah, take no, a bus tour. Yeah, man, I want to feed kids. You know, there's too much stuff going on in the world that people don't care anymore. It's all about money and greed and and selfishness you know and i think social media has kind of put a dampen on people's lives you know yeah it really so does. much now when you even when you see someone do something it's um they filmed it on social media yeah. for the likes or the followers or yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. right which it's is horrible. horrible it's horrible you know it's like hey look what i did i gave a hundred dollars back can i get a thousand likes yeah you know? exactly exactly yeah it's pure yeah yeah it's, and i uh, and I keep saying, like, to people around me that once I hit with the food line, I'm going to disconnect my social media. It'll only be a food business line. It won't even be my personal because I don't want to show any of that. I just want to go do it. Yeah. You know, I want to spend half in, like, orphanages and kids who, who are struggling and put funds and proceeds from my company into that, giving back to those kids, feeding them, you know, giving them a shot, giving them some hope and inspiration, you know? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Have you... Um... That's what... I have you tried Vinny Pastor's sauce? No, I haven't tried it. Nah, I see him plugging it a lot lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried it. Yeah, so you got a little I'm bit of competition. The door. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you causing a beef, huh? Look at you. Now, Remember what now. happened? Remember what happened to Big Pussy? He was sleeping with the fishes. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, he's um, he's come out. <laughs> right, you don't want that to happen to you. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, look, looking back on that, Louis, when you watch The Sopranos back now, do you go for Skip or Big Pussy? Are you, who are you rooting for? Because I really didn't like, <laughs> really didn't like Skip. <laughs> he was you like, know what? Uh, Everybody does it. The funny part about that show is, you know how long I know Big Pussy? How long? If you watch a Sopranos podcast, he just did. I did it before him, and then he did it every week after me, right? I know him since I'm 13. Yeah, right. that's crazy. I do remember you and saying I, that, yeah. And I used to hang out with him when, oh, in his bar. Ah, didn't he? Yeah, and my uncles were like, you know, kind of street guys. And I was like their kind of guy who collected at 13 in the Bronx. And we would go to him. He was one of the guys. And we would go, you know, take, collect from him. And then sit in his bar and hang out with him. And he told the story on the podcast, on Sopranos podcast the other day about it. He was laughing. He's like, I know Louis since he was 13. So you used so, to run some so errands for your uncles and whatnot. <laughs> Yeah, like he was like, you know, we would go to his barn, to, you know, do what we did, take it, and then we would just sit there with him. So, you know, but long story short, was I know him forever. And, and how it turns out that I end up playing the partner on a biggest show in TV, one of the biggest shows in TV history, with him as my partner. And we were such, we were so close that it was so easy. We yeah, would go to a house, yeah, so we would go circles to, around like that, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing, right? Don't you see that? Like, what are the odds of that? To get a role in general is almost impossible. Then to get a role with someone who you've grown up with, who you have a great friendship and relationship with, mm. turns out to be a massive role in TV history. It's yeah, kind of, yeah, it's, yeah. Blessed. it's a blessing. 
it's, it's, it's somebody putting like fate there. You know, I know stuff happens for reasons and whatever, but it ended up having a great dynamic between me and Big Pussy. You know, we, we like I said, I would drive to his house in the Bronx every day because we lived close to each other growing up, right? Yeah. And I, when I got the role, when I got the role, I would drive to his house and me and him would sit in his kitchen and rehearse and rehearse. And then, to, and then when it was time to shoot the day, we would, I would pick him up and we would drive down together and rehearse because all the scenes were in the car. Right? It's true. Yeah, very, yeah. So, uh, yeah and we would drive. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And on the way down to, to the set, we would run the line for like an hour to, the whole way. And then we would get out, get in the cop car, and we would shoot it in within one or two takes. Wow. And I think and I think David Chase started seeing how good it was. And I'm not saying that in an ego way. It was good because we rehearsed the heck out of it. Yeah. You know? We, 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 we did it with each other for a week before, like every day. So it was almost like a play. When we went to his house and we would eat, we would do the lines and it became so natural that it was never, it became almost like a bond immediately. And then how we rehearsed, it came even made it a stronger bond. And then it turns out that David Chase kept writing for us, saying these guys are great, these guys are great. And, and I think it, it was a lot to do with me and Vinny, uh, you know, rehearsing it and doing all of that stuff. Yeah, well, it was great chemistry because you... Um... The way pussy flips back and forth. Yes. Um, wait, wait, wait. One left, wait, so wait. You're talking about. Let me stop you again. You were talking about how you hate Skip, right? <laughs> and that was him. I like Skip. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I yeah. Don't like Skip, especially when he's. Wait, wait, wait. You know why? Gonna crack I'm gonna pussy's you how... head or... <laughs> Did, yeah, was, that, was that one of the wait. lines? Wait, wait. I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna tell you how fucking skewed our society is. Okay. When I'm out, when I'm out, people be like. Fuck you, rat! And I'm like, what? I go. Wait a second. I'm the FBI agent who busted who busted a heroin dealer who kills people who beats his wife who who sells drugs and and is an FBI informant. And I'm the scumbag. And people yeah, would like right. people still, be like, so, you fuck. So who? So back to the question then. Who do you go for when you watch The Sopranos? Back, big. big you, you I go for the Skip Papare. What's that? Skip. Oh, you skip skip. There you go. <laughs> it's funny how people have a hard time um, separating reality from fiction. <laughs> insane, insane, insane. The Soprano fans are great, but they're insane and intense. I did a show called Twenty Four. Yeah, yeah, you were in that for a while. For two years, I was yeah. in that, and I played a cop. But my character was opposite of the Soprano character, where he was a sad, crying. You know, for two years, my mom dies on the show. It's like. You know, so it's a real, it's only one day, so you've got to carry that throughout the year, whatever you do, Yeah. you know? Yeah. So, so, you know, and I got so much love from playing that character as a cop, you know? It was kind of funny. It was so opposite that when I did Edgar on 24, people were like, oh, my God, we cried when you died. Even guys like us, big dudes were like, oh, my God, man, I don't want to bother you, but I cried when you died. I'm like, really? You know? So I had a running joke for years with my daughter when we go place, right? Yeah. It's going on for like since for like ten years, and I would go, I would go to places, and you can tell the difference between a soprano fan and a twenty four fan before, before they even come up to me, before they even walk up to me, like soprano, and my friends would be like, "How do you know that?" You could tell yeah. the body posture. If the soprano fan is, "Hey, motherfucker, what the fuck, you fucking rat," and I'm like, "Oh god," and you can see them coming over like with that aggressive intent. With the Tony right. Soprano walk as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, everybody, everybody, and everybody's famous line is, everybody, I don't care if I'm in Iowa or fucking Toledo, people go, I could have been a Soprano. I could have, where, really? Why? They're drug dealing gangsters. You know, but I laugh. I think it's hysterical. <laughs> then when you, when you get a 24 fam, like, even if they're big dudes and, like, guys, they'll be like, hey, bro. I like cry when you died. I don't want to bother you. I'm like, no, come and talk. You know, <laughs> come and talk. Not cursing me out. But both fans from Sopranos and 24 are the best, most loyal, knowledgeable fans about the shows. That's yeah. amazing. I've been doing this for 38 years, and I wouldn't trade Sopranos or 24 fans for anything. Yeah. Anything. It's incredible. It really is. I'm very blessed. And I also did Entourage as well. Yeah, that's so, one of my that's definitely one of my favorite roles as well. But I've seen you in well, you most, tur Turtles cousin. Yes, yeah, that, that was, was most like, like that was, was most, most like, like my, my real life, life <laughs> character and <laughs> that Skip <laughs> or all the Edgar, that, that Ronnie, Ronnie from, from Entourage is more like my real life uh, character. My real life. 
Because you were trying to run a little racket, weren't you? Where um, it was a uh, athlete that you thought was dying, but it was his pet. Baby go fast, the jersey. It's like the baby. <laughs> well, you I know what's funny is that it was amazing. <laughs> well, how I got that role was Doug Allen. We remember I told you we did among friends. Yes, so Doug Allen's the creator of Entourage. Yes, but yeah, Doug yeah. Allen, we all started out together in 1993. Oh, wow. Before anybody was anything. We all used to hang out. I mean, the guy who did Monk Friends is best friends with Doug since they're kids, and he was part of our crew growing up when we were in L.A. for all those years, and we were buddies, me and Doug. And, when I, and, then, I, and then I got uh, 24, and I was working on 24, and Doug kept slipping me in on Entourage. I did, like, five episodes, you know? Yeah, it was great. It was a great character. Fuck, he was funny. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so that's another relationship that goes back forever, me and Doug Allen, you know? He's a great guy. I love Doug. I love Doug. Doug is great you know so yeah, yeah another small world on how we get these roles you know yeah hmm. who was your uh favorite to work with on honorage out of the boys in the crew was it turtle well the fu another funny part is you know but before entourage before they did entourage like a week or two before that that they were going to shoot entourage right yeah i got a, i got an episode of i don't know if you guys remember this nypd blue was a tv show yeah yeah yeah, that was well, big well, idea. well, out of nowhere, they cast my son, and it was Turtle. All right, there you go. Wow. And and he and it was a great serious off way where I, you know he kills some gangster son and he runs him over and then they come and kill me and it was a sad episode. But it was before Entourage, so we I played his dad on his NYPD Blue before Entourage. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah, I did not know that at all. Right, and then I'll do right shit. I play his cousin. So I remember his dad to his cousin. It's kind of funny, you know. You just again another small coincidence, you know. And how it wasn't planned. None of this has been planned. It just will get like big pussy and me and turtle and I and me. But you know, I like all those characters. They're all good. I love Johnny Drama. Kevin Dillon's great. You know, and Jer I, you know. I guess Meadow Soprano went back to Turtle as well in one of the later seasons, didn't she? Ah, uh, she did. Yeah, yeah. Jamie, so, yeah, Jamie Lynn go. Sigler played herself, didn't she, in Entourage? Yeah. yeah, you know, um, Entourage. Version of herself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Entourage was a fun show, man. People love it. It's a popcorn show. You get it, you love it, you watch it, you watch the characters. You know, Doug did a great job. You know, Mark Wahlberg, those guys are great. And I was honored to be on that show as well as Sopranos and 24. You know, so yeah, all shows. Entourage would have been one of the first, I guess, that successfully had actors playing themselves and sort of, in a way, making fun of themselves a lot of the time as well. Well, that, well that's why I call it the popcorn show. It's yeah. more of an entertainment, you know? Yeah. It's more like, oh, this is cool, you know? You know you know what I'm saying? Like, you could watch all the cool characters that came on and everybody, not just athletes, but Mark Cuban and, I mean, everyone. Everyone on that show. Doug Ellen did a great job. And, yeah, yeah, they even got, ended up getting Scorsese for a small scene, didn't they? Oh, I did too. Yeah, I think so. He got, got Pesci. He got everyone on there. Oh, did they get Joe Pesci, did they? They got, they got Pesci, Pesci for a little role on the show. Yeah, like Big with Pivot. Oh, I'll have to recall. I'll have to rewatch that. But he's got everybody. Everybody is on that show. Yeah, they did well. Mm. They did great. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, so, um, Many Saints in Newark. Have you got much inside scoop on that? Or you? I've just seen it's no. been delayed. Yeah, yeah, I just I saw just that as well. It's been delayed, delayed until September. September. I, think I think they're trying, trying to get a theatrical, theatrical release. release. Hopefully, Hopefully they're, they're hoping that COVID, COVID probably will disappear. disappear. You know, because a lot of movies will show because yeah. of that. But some, some, some will put on demand, but, you know, a lot of people don't want that. They're, They're saying, saying, you know, big, big filmmakers are like, like wait, wait a second. second. We, we signed, signed on with Warner Brothers, Brothers to do a movie. It's, it's a big, big massive, massive movie that we want out in theaters. theaters. That's, That's what we do. And you're putting it on HBO Max. It's not fair to the filmmaker. No, I'd rather watch it in the movies. I'm excited as fuck about it. So, For those who don't know, it's the prequel movie. Oh, yeah, we should add, yeah, it's the prequel to The Sopranos. Yeah, right. Yeah, so that just got pushed, so... You know, that's just the business. The business is a crazy time now. That's why I was so glad and lucky to come to Australia to do The Young Rock, you know, work with the biggest star in the world, The Rock, on his show. You know, great, great. It was a great, great experience doing that show in Australia. I hope it goes again. I hope I come back to Australia when everything is better and I, you know, then I come eat at your restaurant. What kind of food do you cook? Yeah. Yeah, he's got to say something about my buns, I think. He doesn't uh, like the buns I da use. Damien does good food, but I don't like the burger buns he chooses. 
Oh, whoa, yeah, not a big fan of his buns. They're a bit crunchy. <laughs> Wait, that's a little. I want to hear no more about that shit. I'm talking about the, you're talking about your boys' buns and shit. I don't know about that, bro. Yeah, come in for sure, mate. Yeah, yeah, we we'll share the feed, but um, yeah. yeah. And how, how far, far is it from Brisbane, Brisbane where I was? Ah, uh, it's an hour flight or forty-five minute flight. Yeah, 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 they, yeah kind they kind of closed, closed everything down, down when I was there. You couldn't, couldn't fly, fly anywhere. It was yeah, weird. at that stage when you were there, because I was meant to come up for a weekend um, to see a friend, and yeah, the borders, I think, were still closed. So yeah, I wasn't able was to get closed. up there. But it, it has um, relaxed a lot um, since you since you uh, got back to LA. Is it still crazy over there? Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of crazy, crazy here as well. well. It's mad, you know, you know New, New York, York, LA. They're, they're trying, trying to start to open stuff up. up. I mean... I mean, I mean you, you, you're, you're destroying your businesses, business, you're destroying, destroying everything. everything. And, and, you know, don't get me wrong, people, people are, are sick and it's awful and it's, awful and it's terrible. And, and, you know, I encourage, I encourage people, people to wear their masks. masks. And when you're in crowds or you're around people, people, if you, you want, want to take it off when you're in the park walking, walking go, go ahead. You know, you're around, around yeah. nobody. But, you know, try to avoid it getting worse and worse. You know, whatever it may be. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to give advice. But it's kind of bad here. Everything's closed down. There's no indoor dining. You know, you know, New York, York is terrible. terrible. People, People are losing their livelihoods. There has, has to be a solution, solution you know. You know? The, the problem, problem can't, can't persist. persist. There, there has, has to be a solution. solution. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, exactly, which seems to be the vaccine. But um, they're talking about rolling it out here in March. But you've still got 60% of people in a survey I saw that say they were refused to take, to take it. it. <laughs> No one wants it. Even here, the surveys are like crazy, and you don't blame them. I mean, you know, some, you know, who knows? Who knows what it's going to be? Who knows what's in it? Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not discouraging anyone. I'm not encouraging anyone. I'm not. I'm neutral on it. You know. You know, I I like to see you know more time of what happens with it and the side effects and stuff like that, but. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I just, just think, think wear your mask, mask as much as you can. can. Try to avoid, avoid giving it to people. people. You know, just, just try. Just, just do what you got to do, do, you know? Yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a tough situation. You know? Yeah. Um, well, mate, I was going to see if I can ask you. We always finish up with uh, 10 questions or so. Just get your opinion on some things. Learn a little bit more about your likes and dislikes. Um, we, don't, we, don't, we don't like, like crunchy, crunchy buns. buns. <laughs> yes. No crunchy buns. Brioche. I like, the, Brioche I like soft buns. Yeah, it's got to be soft. Yes, exactly. I don't I, know where you found this like, like hard bun. I don't want to eat a burger on my bun. lounge and then have to vacuum the lounge after it. Uh, I don't want. I don't, I don't, I don't like, like crunchy, crunchy buns either. I like, I like soft potato, potato buns. buns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, milk buns, brioche right. buns, oh, potato gosh. buns. Exactly. Potato, Potato bun side, side Daniel. We, we threw you under the bus, bro. We better be good when we get to it. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but just for the record, hey, I don't hey, get hey. crunchy buns either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found them crunchy when I ate there. So. Hey, tomorrow, tomorrow you go to his place, he's selling like potato buns, brioche buns, and cheese. Yes, yes. As advertised had a, on the podcast. I'll just put them in a bucket of water before I send them out. <laughs> we had a bun shame, shame you. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a thing soon. You won't be able to do that anymore. So I know. Just... Enough of that shit. Enough, enough of that, that fucking, fucking cancel shit. shit. It's like, oh, yes, God. Exactly. exactly. We'll, be, we'll be in shit now for shaming someone's buns. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're my buns as well. I'm going to report you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, besides, I guess, um, Sopranos, what role would you be most, besides Sopranos 24, what role would you be most proud of? If you had to pick a role, a part mm. you've had, uh, what's your favourite? Wow, I've had, I mean, I, would, I, I, I honestly, honestly would say, say, I know I know you, you just said don't say it, but Sopranos 24, 24 but, then but then I did, I did a, a film. film. Called, called Suicide, Suicide Kings. Kings. Oh, I, I, I did, love that with Christopher Walken. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's, that's how I got, got Sopranos, Sopranos, to be honest, honest with you. With you. It was oh, kind of a whole thing. Did, did you watch, watch Suicide, Suicide Kings? Kings? Yes, I love it. Loved it. Well, all, all, all the, the stuff that, that I did in Suicide, Suicide Kings, Kings was improvised. improvised. In one, one night, night, they oh, put really? those eight they scenes. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They did those. They put those eight scenes in. Me and Dennis Leary, I was supposed to have no wine. That's why I was telling you earlier about when people say you got no wines, no nothing. I show up 100 miles an hour, as you can tell on the podcast. That's me. I'm talking. I literally just, just woke up. up. I usually have way more, you know, you know I'm, I'm a thousand miles <laughs> out there. All the, All the time. time. Don't matter, matter what, what I do. do. If, you if you find, find something, something you love, you're passionate, passionate 
express it. And yeah. when, when I did, when I did suicide, suicide things, I had one that was supposed to have a big role in it. The director didn't want to use me. Long story short, I, he goes, my, my buddy was the writer producer said, would you be in this role? You have no lines. You were Dennis Leary in a car. You were in one scene. You know, do me a favor, be in it. I was like, okay. The director didn't want me in it. Long story short, again, I go in, Dennis Leary goes, I'm not saying these lines to the director. He had a five page monologue. He goes, me and this guy are going to improvise. Turns out, out one night, night shoot that scene in one night, night turns out to get eight scenes, scenes in the movie. movie. They wrote a movie for me and Leary off that. And George Ann Walken, because Christopher Walken's in the movie, her, his, his wife, wife is the casting person of Sopranos and Entourage. George Ann Walken. God. So that led to and, The Sopranos. Well, she saw me and she tried to get me. She loved me in the movie and, and, and it was kind of weird. And I, she was like, oh, can you come in? So I went and I read for the first season of Sopranos. I didn't get it because I, did, I got cast in a show in Hawaii uh, called, called Fantasy, Fantasy Island, Island with Malcolm McDowell. Yep. And I went to Hawaii for the first, first scene of Sopranos. I lived in Hawaii for a year. And that guy, Tonawai, the guy with the rock had the truck to? Yes, yeah. Another sport. He was my driver because his dad was like a teamster boss. And he was one of my drivers before he was anything in Hawaii. And we would hang out all the time. And then I, the, the show got canceled. So I went back to New York to see my mom for Christmas. And George Ann heard I was there and says, we're casting the second season of Sopranos. Bring him in. And within one, within an hour, I got in there. Met, I sat with James because I knew James again from 94, 95. Before Sopranos, we would hang out. I went in, I, I flew from Hawaii after a miserable experience, you know, me and Malcolm McDowell did the fans down, I didn't go, I flew to New York to say hi to my mom for Christmas, uh, I go in, uh, Dan Lofini's like, hey, Louie, I'm going to read with you, because I knew him six years before, we read, I read one scene, he goes, okay, you can leave, I leave, I go downstairs, I call, I got the role of Sopranos, the second season, that's how I got the role, George Ann was a huge fan of mine, Dan Lofini I knew six years before, and, uh, and it turned out to be, again, one of those coincidences, you know? Wow. So, so you, you actually yeah. read with Jim for the role. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, and amazing. I knew him. I, I, I used to hang out with him. I used to hang yeah, out with that him. That is like, awesome. Like, yeah, that's way cool. before Sopranos, we were yeah. buddies. You seem, you seem to get a lot of, uh, you seem to get a lot of uh, scripts and whatnot or a lot of uh, new movies and whatnot from scenes in cars. Is that something you work yeah, on? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because I can sit down the whole time. <laughs> So I remember but Suicide so, so, Kings when Dennis Leary's, um, I think he's going to shoot the homeless guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the basket. Basket and chicken. <laughs> the basket. Yeah. But, but all, of, but the all of that stuff. Remember, remember you, you saw eight scenes, scenes I'm in that movie, movie right? right? Yeah. I, I had zero lines line when, when I showed up. Wow. So that's, and and that's, so that's a massive um, note to people in the industry. Um, that's right. Show up, be enthusiastic, be positive. Don't worry about your, your trail. Don't worry about your prediction. Show up, enthusiastic, be passionate. Passion, passion, passion will carry you through life. Whether it's cooking, whether it's movies, whether it's whatever job you do. If you're passionate, you will succeed. It's the people that drag their feet and believe everything's a chore or a job. Oh, I don't want to do it. Those are the people that walk through life frustrated and miserable because they're not enjoying what they do. It ain't yeah. always about the money. It ain't always about millions of dollars. It's about being happy every day. You can't buy happiness. You have to earn happiness. And happiness comes from yourself. You know, you like what you do. You love what you do. You love the people you're around. You will be happy. Bottom line. That's what they say. If you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. <laughs> and you know what? I'm 52 years old. I've never worked a day in my life. Because all I do is, I've been doing this since I'm 13. I'm doing the food stuff. I, every day I wake up enthusiastic to do stuff. You know, so anyway, that's how it started with Suicide Kings. I got this role, no line, turns out to get me Sopranos. Sopranos ended up getting me 24. So I got going into, into Suicide Kings with zero lines, no money. I got $500 for the day. I ended up turning that one day with my passion into the Sopranos, which became a massive show. And then the executive producer of 24 saw me on Sopranos and goes, oh, my God, I love you on Sopranos. I want to write you uh, one episode of 24. One episode turned into 48 episodes in an Emmy. We won an Emmy. And, you know, I got to go to the Emmys. I was on stage. got to the Emmy for the best drama. So, again, one day, no lines. On, on Suicide, Suicide Kings, King, turned, turned into eight, eight scenes. scenes. They wrote a movie for me and Leary. I came I back. I got, got Sopranos. Sopranos. Turned out to be massive. massive. Then, then I got, got 24, 24 from one day with no lines in a movie. Yeah, perfect. So I guess you could say that's also led to you uh, getting on this massive podcast. 
Yeah. <laughs> I know. I feel so privileged. All, all I kept, all I kept looking for was, where's my consolation gift? What am I getting? When I did this, maybe I'll get a burger with some fucking hard bun. But you know, but you know, it's funny. I'm back here. The you you shout your shit burgers all day. I did this. But you, you'll be able to come into his kitchen and show him how to do stuff. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I will. I'll come in there and I don't want to show you up in front of your employees. <laughs> Thanks, mate. That'd be great. They don't have much respect for him anyway, mate. So you won't, you won't be changing much there. Oh, ouch! Oh, next question. Um, next question. Out of uh, favorite movie, what's your favorite movie of all time? Oh. Uh, I would say The Godfather 1 and 2. Yeah. I, I can consider them one film. I don't consider the third a part of it. You know, the third was a, was like a bastard child of the movie where you're going, what are we doing with this? Why, why are we here? Did you hear that yeah, they're, they're going to remake it sort of with some different scenes that they'd shot? Did you hear that? I don't know. No, I hope they don't. Leave it alone. Let it be, you know? Yeah, well, that's what I mean. It, it, Leave a bad movie alone. <laughs> You're right, exactly. And like some of my, some of my, like like the two Godfathers, I consider one. It would be like Scarface would be another. Uh, Far, uh, Forrest Gump was probably on my was my third or fourth film. Forrest Gump was amazing. Yeah. Forrest Gump was one of the best movies ever made. People who don't get that are kind of weird, you know. Just a coincidence of how his life, he meeting people, changed the trajectory of life and everything. The smiley face T-shirt. You know, meeting Elvis, doing all that, all that stuff, stuff to me and having this underdog character. character. I don't know. It was one of my, probably my, my third or fourth favorite film ever. You know, yeah, Scarf. It was brilliant, good, wasn't it? Um, I, 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 good still, I was young when it came out, but the buzz about it was insane. Yeah, you know, out. Schindler's List, Schindler's List to me was mesmerizing. Yeah, that's like, old school Liam Neeson. You don't see Liam Neeson in many roles like that anymore, do you? No, but that was Spielberg as well. Yes, yes. And, so and I think and that was that, he, he won his first Oscar for that. Spielberg. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And yes. it was one of the most mesmerizing movies I've ever watched. I, I was like fascinated with that. So those are like my top five. Rocky one. Rocky one. If they don't make if they don't make Rocky seven like they did, which I love all of them, don't get me wrong. But after Rock Rocky One was is known in like the film academy as one of the best films made in history, in our film history. You know, and that was it was an under another underdog film about a guy who has nothing who comes out of the ghetto in a way. And I love Stallone. I mean, he's a he, again, he did it like you said. He, he didn't sell out, and he became the you know one of the biggest stars in the world. Yeah, well, it was an unbelievable gamble to make when you've got nothing. <laughs> You got nothing and you take that thousand right. dollars, um, which even back then is so much more than what it is now. Like it's still a lot of money now. <laughs> but you know what that shows? What I just said that his passion for his yeah. character and his passion for what he believed in didn't sell out. His passion made him the biggest, one of the biggest stars in the world. Yeah, yeah, well, it could have been very different, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah. He would have been nothing. You know? They would have put like, uh, you know, like Robert Redford in it instead of Stallone. You know how Hollywood is when it comes up. <laughs> yeah, that's a strong possibility. Yeah, you know, Brad Pitt. Very different franchise. Right, yeah. right. Uh, my favorite TV show. Do you have a favorite, favorite TV show? You know, The Odd Couple. The Odd Couple. The Odd Couple. That's, 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 what, that's what, what basically, basically got, got me into, into the business. When I was like... 10, 11, 12, 13, growing up in the Bronx, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was fascinated with the odd couple, Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, Mork and Mindy, a lot of the Gary Marshall shows, and, and like, and then the Aaron Spelling shows, and then the Stephen Cannell shows, like, the Aaron Spelling shows were like the Love Boat, like, all of his projects. And it was all fantasy and, and great fun shows back then. And in 1960, and Gary Marshall, you know Gary Marshall is Penny Marshall's brother. You know Laverne and Shirley. He did. Yeah, I know Laverne yeah. and Shirley. I don't know much about Gary Marshall though. Well, Gary Marshall's the creator of Odd Couple, Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, and Walking right. Mindy. Happy Days. There you go. And, and in 1979, Gary Marshall. He's from the Bronx. He's from my age where I grew up. And so was Penny Marshall, Laverne. So what? what in 1979, Gary Marshall had three of the top ABC shows on. He had Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, and Mork and Mindy. They were in 1979. That was right. I remember. Think of the stars that are in those shows. Robin Williams. Uh, Penny Mama became the biggest director. Ron Howard. Yeah, he's now one of the biggest directors as well. 
I mean, I mean think about the, 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 the spawn that came out of the, the Gary Marshall era. They were all, they're all massive players today in the game, you know? And that was my idol growing up was Gary Marshall. He created, the odd couple was like Jack Klugman and Tony Randall. Like, I watched that since I was a kid. I even have them now on DVDs and on uh, TiVo. And I'll watch them. Like, I, and, and when I was a kid, I would sit home and I would, stay, I would just watch the odd couple. I would watch all of those shows throughout the 70s and then the 80s. And that was what inspired me to become an actor was the odd couple and a lot of the Gary Marshall shows. You know, and I actually got the, the luck, the, the luck of meeting him when I lived in the valley in Toluca Lake. He had his own, he owned a theater, he owned his own studio there. So he would do, and he would be walking up and down the block with Bob Holt. They were like 90, and I would sit there and I would talk to him, hey, nice to meet you. And he'd be like, okay, yeah, and I was this Bronx guy. And Bob Hope, I would see him all the time at the Starbucks with his bodyguard driver. It was insane. That was when I first got out here. To me, Gary Marshall, to me, it was like, oh my, and I read his book, and it, it was just amazing, man. I, that's, that's what started me out, the 1970s TV shows, especially the Arthur couple, and then the whole, after that, from the Aaron Spellings to the Stephen J. Cannells were like the 18, you know, that's, Stephen J. Cannell had the commission. I mean, that guy was another genius who had 30 shows, and so did Aaron Spelling, and so did Gary Marshall, and they were all kind of like TV idols for me. Ah, awesome. There you go. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Nah, I wasn't expecting that. Nah, one. man, either. I definitely <laughs> wasn't expecting that. Um, <laughs> uh, favorite actor you've ever worked, or an actor you've learned the most from, or had the best experience with, either or? Robert Downey Jr. I did Natural Born Killers. After Among oh, Friends yeah. came out, after Among Friends came out, I met Oliver Stone, who was my idol as a filmmaker. Yeah. Like growing up, I, I don't want to make. I, I, well, I'm not much. I, I like Scorsese. I love Coppola, but I'm not much of like. I want to make films like those guys. My films that I want to write and direct and produce are more Oliver Stone geared, and I've always had that passion. I didn't write his book, and it was amazing, Oliver's story. You know, so when I read, when I when I when I was growing up, I want to be Oliver Stone. I want to make those gritty, hardcore, realistic movies, right? And and turns out, after amongst friends, we drive back from Sundance, right? Me and Mira, we come back. I have a meeting. I drive the director to a meeting to meet Oliver Stone. I'm like, what? I'll drive you. I drive him. I go in the room. Oliver's like, hey, come in here to me. This is no This is 1993. My first movie, I needed on my union card. After Among Friends hit Sundance, I go back to LA to start my career, right? The first person I meet is Oliver Stone in a meeting. He goes, hey, man, I love you in Among Friends. I want to use you because you're, you're, you're a great actor. This is not, I'm, I'm my first movie. Nothing. Okay? He goes, I'm going to put you in my next movie. He goes, I'm going yeah, to put you in my next movie. I go, what is it? Natural Born Killer. Yeah, Cast no, me in one day, and this is how you say how one day your dream can come true. I would like fantasy and doing all the stone kind of movies. I want to be the first person I meet is him who launches my career. You don't find that another coincidence? Yeah. Nah, I mean, that's, that's in that's uh very surreal. It must have yeah. must have been mind blowing. Mind blowing, and then a week later, I'm in a room now with Oliver Stone, Robert Downey Jr., Woody Harrelson, Tommy Lee Jones, Julia Lewis. Uh, Tom Sizemore casting for Matrimon Kills, and they had me there kind of pairing me up with other guards. It, was, it couldn't have been any more severe than mine. And I've never been a union card, so he flies me to Chicago. And I stayed there with them for almost three months to shoot Matrimon Kills in Joliet Prison. And uh, and they paid for my union card. He had flew me back to go to the Among Friends premiere that was in New York at the time. So he kind of was the, the person that I wanted to be, like filmmaking wise, right? Yeah. Ended up launching my entire career without even realizing it. And yeah, again, yeah, it's, a, it's a crazy movie. <laughs> yeah, spin- crazy. So I was out with them every single night. And this is when Robert Downey was going through hard times and he was still the most beautiful, generous, nicest, respectful person I have ever met in this business on a consistent, like he was just nice to everyone. Even with his problems, he was on drugs at the time, and he, but he was still a great person. And that's why I tell people, the reason he's successful again with all the shit that he went through is because genuinely, he's a great person. Oh, that's good to hear, because there's nothing worse than one, someone you love and watch on the telly, you find out. You know, negative stories and blah, blah, blah. Oh, I've been and, uh, there. Oh, I've been there going, hey, I can't wait to meet this guy. And the guy's like an asshole. And you go, oh, God, I can't wait to get away yeah, from so this Yeah, so they guy. say you be careful to meet your heroes. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And, and like I, I, said, I love Robert Downey. Yeah, so that's really cool to hear. The first thing, yeah. the first movie I saw him in was um, the one with the, uh, the dead people that can't get into heaven. I can't remember what it's called. 
Yeah, he's, he's done, done some, some great, great work. work. He's, he's one of the best actors, actors of our generation, of my generation, like, you know, my time. Like, he's a great actor. Less than here. And he's one of the highest paid, like. I see that he deserves it. That's shared a lot, you know. He went from zero dollars not long ago, in right? Jail, down and out, and that, um, yeah, you look at him now. <laughs> he was a crack addict with no money, lost his whole entire fame, and that's why you never give up in life. Yeah, you know, you never give up. You only give up when you don't really believe in yourself anymore and you want to just quit. Otherwise, if you have a passion, you always believe the next door can open, can change your life. I live like that. Yeah. You know, I live like that. I live waking up every morning. I hate Saturday. I hate Fridays. You know why? Because I love the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because that's like my roulette wheel. You never know when you're going to get a role or a movie or a show or something that can open a door and change your life. You know, the weekends to me are just, yeah, you know, I love the week. I, to me, my life is one big gamble. And if you look, I just said to you, five massive coincidences. Were they coincidences or were they meant to be in my life? Me working with Big Pussy, me working with Jerry Farrar, you know, playing your dad. You make your own luck by turning up. And like you said, uh, if you'd went there pissy and shitty that you didn't have any lines, you probably would have ended up with no lines. <laughs> right, exactly. And yeah. just every, the, the, but the coincidences of my whole career have been amazing. And the funny part is after Oliver Stone hired me my first week out here, then I got hired within the next year, I got hired by Tim Burton, John Landis, Ivan Reitman. This one, they were big. Yeah, and then oh, yeah, you and I did Ed Wood with uh, Tim Burton. Yes, yes. right. I'm in mean, Ed Wood with and a Johnny Depp. Yes. Johnny Depp is, yes. was another nice guy. Like I went to his office and he was really nice, you know. But then I did Dread. I did Ed Wood. Then I did Beverly Hills Cup Three with uh, with Eddie Murphy and John Landis. Then I did uh, Ivan Reitman with I did a movie called Father's Day with Julia Dreyfus, uh, Billy Crystal, and me and Jared Harris played partners in that movie. So I ended up doing, I ended up, my, 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 my film school, once I got here, were learning from the biggest directors in Hollywood. I was my film school. I also got to get a massive education in film by working with Oliver, working with Tim Burton, John Landis, Ivan Wright, and Brian Singh. I started learning as I was going. So the first learning on the job. Yes, by the biggest people who I've idolized for 30 years. Now I'm in their rooms and learning from them. And that's how I learned so much. You know, I'm always watching. I'm always learning. You know, I like to watch what everyone's doing. You know, I love it. It's like cooking. The same thing. I watch food stuff morning, noon, and night. I always want to know what one ingredient can change the whole trajectory of a recipe. What you can leave out, still make it great. How you can make it a little healthier. So I do the same thing in my acting career, you know? So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. Um, Skipping over to music, do you have a favorite band or musician? Not really. I like all kinds of music. I mean, I like I love all kinds of music except the hip hop rap they play together, that mumble stuff. Otherwise, I'm fine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, definitely taking a downturn the last ten years, hip hop. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Like I grew up with twenty, but yeah. I grew up with Run DMC, LL Cool J, you know, the Beastie Boys, all that, like that kind of hip hop. The Sugar Hill Gang. You know, now it's like, hey, motherfucker, kill someone, beat a bitch up, and do a hoe or whatever. It's like, what? And have pink hair and tattoos on your face. Yeah, yeah. And screaming vulgarities. And just, I don't like it. I don't, I'd rather, I like 70s. I like all kinds of music. You can put on stuff. I'll listen to anything. I, except for that kind of angry stuff, degrading people. I don't want to hear that, you know? Yeah, it's definitely, um, yeah, not what it used to be. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think a lot of music in general is not what it used to be. Um, exactly. And, and, you and, and you know what? And, and, and music to me is like food. I'm very diverse with it. You know, I'll try, I'll listen to stuff. You know, you open your mind and you never know, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mate, a big show over here at the moment that's just hit Netflix. Quiet. Uh, that, yeah, I thought I'd ask you about. Cobra Kai, have you watched that yet? Love, 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 love. <laughs> and let me... we, had, we had to ask you about that because uh, and, and... I assume you've seen the Karate Kids. Yeah, I yeah, watch it with my girlfriend and my daughter, daughter right? And then, and then like, in the middle of it, I'll get up and get all this. You know, like Rocky? Hey, man, I want to go out and fight. When it's Cobra Kai, I get up, I start throwing kicks. They'll be like, yo, dude, relax. I'll be on the kitchen. Yeah, Cobra Kai, and I start doing it. They're like, yo, chill out. You're going to hurt yourself. Yeah, I just finished the third season. I fucking love it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Love, love, love it. Again, it's a popcorn type show. Yeah, it is. It's like having a big drink of nostalgia. I love it. And you want to know what's even funnier? When Machio, like, about 10 years ago, I used to play cards with him. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and he did when he couldn't get a job and shit. He was the, again, sweetest, nicest person, nicest person. And I can't be any more happier for his success. And, you know, oh, it's amazing, it's isn't it? That's, and that's another thing of it. It's a great comeback. Because I remember. The first thing I saw him in years was, you know, he was playing himself in Entourage, which was, yeah, you know, right. they sort of made, he made fun of himself a my, little my, bit. Hey, look, my cousin, back now. My cousin, Denny. Look at, look at, look at, yeah, look at <laughs> looking back at Come on. Karate Kid now, do you think, now that you've watched Cobra Kai, do you think Daniel was the bully back in the day or do you think it was Johnny? I love how they're reversing yeah, it. Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah, so yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm but, a Johnny fan. Yeah, I'm a Johnny fan. I love the whole show. I love all the characters, even the villain kids, even the mean guy. What's his name? The old guy. Uh, oh, Chris. I forget. John Chris. I love he's, he's aged, I love, though, hasn't he? He's got a very he's distinctive face. He's, he's, he's funny. funny. Every, Every time, time he comes, comes in, he stands there. And you're like, oh, my God. What's, what's going to happen? Yeah. Who's he going to slap him in? And the little, they drink these little weird beers. I don't know if that's... I've never seen anything like that. They've always got these little weird beers that remind me of the 80s. <laughs> that they're sitting on back in the... <laughs> It's kind of it's funny, funny what they, they do with the show. It's kind of smart. Is they don't, they don't date it, it so, so it's still it's now, but it still looks old. Yes, exactly. Mm. It's still and it's got the love, cheesiness the of an eighties film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which uh, I don't know. I think it appeals to young kids now, but it also appeals to the older generation that grew up on the Karate Kid. So I think it, uh -huh. it's brilliant the way they've made it work. Mm. Right, and, then, and I think with the whole bullying undertone of it, people, are, that's a big, big topic of today's uh, pro stuff, so that helped as well, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, I love, all right, so we give a yes to Cobra Kai. Good. Yes to Cobra definitely. Kai. Um, I did actually already ask you about your cuisines, uh, but favorite Stop meal. That. But you know what? You know how I know he don't know what he's talking about, Dan? Because he keeps saying cuisine, so your buns are probably great. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Any, he doesn't know what he's talking any, about. <laughs> any adult male. Uh, his, fa his favorite don't don't cuisine is a sandwich from the 7-Eleven. <laughs> Ham and cheese sandwich from the 7-Eleven. <laughs> yeah, the packaged ones. <laughs> From that way, from that, from that area. When I was in Brisbane, I was up in that area, which was scary, dude. It was all... Gambling den, strip clubs, and there was a street I was on. What is it yeah, called? The Valley? What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Is the Valley? Yeah. Oh, no, they've moved now. They're all in the, all the strip clubs are in the same little area now down the street. It's, uh, yeah, That's, it's, it, it's a the dark valley. street. <laughs> it's called like the Valley or something. Yeah, Fortitude Valley. Fortitude Valley, yeah. That's, yes. yeah. Is yeah, your place yeah, in that you area? Package sandwiches in the 7 Elevens there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how long they've been there, but yeah. <laughs> I and think not, they the not, expiry not dates not on them with buns. the tech stuff. And he's and knocking, knocking your bun. Your bun. You know what we do <laughs> when we come there? When we come there and I eat a burger, and if the burger buns are good, we'll put them in the, the you know, the tank where you put the clown and you hit it with the ball and it dunks them? Yeah, that's dumb. what we'll do. Yeah, we'll be... that, that's more than fair. Yeah, fair enough. But if you like we'll do... the buns, we're putting Damien in the fucking tank. Yes. We'll do. <laughs> no, we'll sorry, do for charity. Like yeah, 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 you'll like him. You'll like him. Number eight, if you could work with any actor that you haven't worked with, who would you love to work with? Oh, man. man. Probably uh, probably Brad Pitt. Pitt. I love Brad Pitt. He's one of my favorite yeah, actors. He's Brad Pitt's Pitt. great. He's, he's great, great, man. He's, he's really an actor. actor. Like, like, I watch him, and I love his acting. acting. You know, I've worked, worked with Downey. With Downey. Uh, who else? Like, like today like, or even back in the day, day you mean? Uh, I guess any time. Any time, yeah. You know uh, what? I've I've on. Probably, probably, probably Brad Pitt. Pitt. I, love I love Brad Pitt. Pitt. You know, I love how he, he's a lead man who's a character, and so is the uh, John. Uh, what the fuck is his name? So is Robert Downey. Robert Downey and Brad Pitt and Johnny Depp are the same kind of actor. Even Sean Penn, where they're massively uh, lead men, they're massively lead men, but they play these characters in all their films. So it's, you know, characters. You know, I would love to work with like Tom Hanks. I love Tom Hanks. You know, Brad Pitt, you know, Sean Penn, kind of guys that transform as leads, not just being a good looking one note guy. Yeah, and, but you, and you forget that it's them. I've always said, I, yes. I find it hard to watch Tom Cruise movies because the whole time, nothing yeah. against him, but I, I know it's Tom Cruise, not the actor, not the character, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. like, a hundred percent. I can't escape. I'm like, this is Tom Cruise, but Johnny Depp transforms. You forget it's Johnny Depp. 
Right. And so does Robert Downey. Watch him in Natural Born Killers. He plays Geraldo Rivera kind of guy. Uh, and in Tropic Thunder. Gap. <laughs> Right. His, his, his roles are they, like, like actors like that to me that transform and you don't know who you're watching. Exactly. That's exactly. Even if you're a great looking lead man and you can make people watch you as that character, never see that your actor, never see you as that your person. That's amazing to me. I love that. Yeah, it's brilliant. Good stuff. All right, Brad Pitt. I'll see if I can make it happen for you. Louis? You better. We'll, we'll, we'll tag Brad in this. Um, you better. I'm gonna, you better. I'm going to trash, trash your burger bun. Like, okay. I'm going to be I'll like, send you the think? link and you can do a, a review for his burger bun. I'll send one over to you, mate, in LA, and I guarantee they'll still be soft when they get there. Oh, you better do it. I'm going to be like, who makes this shit? I'm calling shit the whole time. Mate, if you could work with any director that you haven't already worked with, who would it be? Man. Uh... Probably Spielberg. Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably, probably Spielberg. Spielberg. He's, he's such, such like a visionary from, from Jaws, Jaws to, to Schindler's List. I mean, I mean, he's. I, I, I would love to work with like a Spielberg or. Uh, you know, I've worked with so many great directors, but I would say Spielberg would be up there. Definitely Spielberg to do something with him, or even. Uh, Oh, man, I'm blanking right now. But definitely with top list would probably be Spielberg to be on a set with him. Yeah. Yeah, he's done some masterpieces. Cool, cool. Yeah, and just, and just he goes from fantasy to, to, like I said, Schindler's List to, I don't know, his diversity in, 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 in directing is just great, you know? Yeah, if you look at Schindler's List to E.T. Um... Yeah, would I like to work Would I like to work with Scorsese? Absolutely. You know, would I like to work with Coppola? Absolutely. Not that they're my favorites, but they're on my list of great directors. But you know, when you look at guys like like uh, like like Scorsese and and Coppola, their body of work, there's only I, I only see few films that I like from each director. You know, a lot of their films are pure and weird, like they were. You know, like that's their taste. I'm not knocking them, but you know, a guy like Oliver Stone, to me, every movie he made was fascinating. You know. Yeah, and diverse as well. They're um, and diverse. Yeah, yeah so diverse. and that's why I think I, I think I would have to pick Spielberg to be able to work with him. Or, yeah, him or Scorsese would kind of, you know, be be great. Okay, and now final question, I guess, just for we sort of did cover it a few times, but any lessons, whatever you've learned out throughout your career, life that you would pass on to people wanting to get into the industry, or any regrets that you've had that you'd pass on um, to anyone listening that wants to follow in these steps, become an actor and have a crack at it. Yeah. yeah yes. And, and it goes as well as not just an actor, but uh, uh, in life, whatever you do, you know, whether you want to be whatever, whatever you feel like being, be passionate, passion, 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 be knowledgeable. No, so your passion can get you indoors. People will be like, wow, this guy's enthusiasm is great. Then when you sit down, they're going to want to know your knowledge of what you want to do, right? That's the second biggest thing. No, read. I, I, I didn't go to film school. I went to fifth grade. I didn't go to film school. I didn't go to acting school. Yeah, and I, 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 you want to know what? I've done 70 movies. I've done 10 t- bit of biggest TV series in history. I, I didn't go to acting school. What I did was I would audition for NYU films as a kid, and I would learn to be on set for free. And I would make these movies that were real movies because these kids had 50 grand to make these movies in the 80s. And I would travel with them, and I would do these NYU films, and i build up a library of NYU films by being on set and learning. I had learned how to act. How to, how to make, make movies, movies for free. free. And, that's and that's how, how I started. started. Do your own thing. That's, that's what, what I was trying, trying to say earlier. earlier. And, and, you know, you know, you know it's, it's just, just, it's just it's again, again, be, be passionate. passionate. Don't, don't take a job. job. I, don't I don't care what it is. If you're not going to show up enthusiastic, if you show up to a job going, I'm only making $50, then don't take it. Don't show up bitter. Don't show up negative. Show up, take a job. That's what I do. And I show up. I'm a thousand miles an hour. I'm very cooperative with people. I like collaboration. And again, passion, 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 knowledge. Yeah. Knowledge. Know what, know what you're, you're doing. doing. You know, so when, when you, you get, get the people, people see your passion, passion going, I love cooking. I love this. And you're like, Louie, come, come into my kitchen. kitchen. And then me and you start you collaborating. And you're like, oh, I, didn't I, didn't I didn't realize you can do that with a pizza. pizza. I, didn't I didn't realize you could do that. that. That's, That's my, my knowledge, knowledge of the past. You know, if the passion will get you in the door, knowledge will carry you through. 
You know, yeah. I, constantly I constantly read. read. I, don't I don't watch, watch much television, television now. now. I, I read, read so much. much. And a lot, a lot of it has, has to do with food or entertainment or business or whatever I'm interested in. But yeah. I read an hours a day. Every time you see me on my phone, I'm, I'm basically reading stuff, stuff, you know? Yeah, I believe knowledge is power. So any young kid out there starting in the acting world or the food world or being a lawyer, whatever it is you want to be, number one is passion, passion, passion. I can't emphasize that anymore. Believe in what you're doing. Believe in yourself then. Drop, Drop the knowledge, knowledge when you when get in the door from yeah, your so passion. do your homework and, before you rock up. Mm. Right. right. And don't, and don't always look, look for the, the, the stars. stars. Remember, Remember the, the, the dirt, dirt is below. You work, work your way up to the stars. stars. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, working your way up and you learn and you, you meet connections and you meet people and, and your life will evolve. But when you start cursing people and, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I hate this. Then, then, you're, then you're doomed for failure. You know? I think one of my biggest uh, attributes and my biggest... Uh, things, things are, are I believe I in myself. myself. I'm one of the most, most confident, confident people you can ever meet, meet you know? know? And again, I'm not like Brad Pitt. I'm not like 20 years old. I'm not. I still walk in the door and people, whether it's food, and they're like, oh my God, man, you just dominated me with your passion. And the passion, I think, comes from confidence. I believe in what I do. I'm the, I was always a confident person growing up. I guess that's why I worked so much. You know, I would show up to auditions and be like, you ain't better than me. I don't care how much school I went to. I don't care what I went to. Boom. That's why I got so many jobs. You're confident. You know, be happy with what you look like. Be happy with who you are. You can't change that. Yeah. So if you're comfortable within your own skin, it shows. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely I'd agree. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, and, and I, when I go, I'm sorry. No, when I go, when I, and when I go into rooms, I try to explain to people. I don't see my, and, and this is going to show you how my career has been opposite of what I am. I'm a big Italian guy. So what do most people think? Hey, you're a gangster in every movie. Hey, mafia, <laughs> I never, I played a gangster in two or three movies out of all my films. I played the best friend. I played the cop. I play everything because when I go into meetings and I go into rooms, what I see in my mind, people will see in the room of you. So if I go in with the suit on, hey, with the toothpick and, and Sopranos, people will see that. But if yeah. you walk with a smile and you believe that I could be your neighbor, I could be the, the pizza guy with you. And every single one of my roles have been so diverse and nothing to, to what I am looking like, like a big Italian American as a gangster. I am very blessed as a, as a New York Italian actor, big guy, to not have a career as a gangster in every role. Yeah, you, know? it, you see so many, unfortunately, do get stereotyped and stuck in those roles. Yeah, and it's because I think people see that because I get calls now from actors going, hey, how do I get into Toronto? How do I get to this? How do I get to this? And I tell them, I go, I go, think about playing a neighbor. Think about playing the cook. Think about playing, you know, a cop. Don't always think about the gangster thing, the gangster thing. And now I'm getting calls from actors going, you're right, Louie. You know, bring a bigger diversity to my career. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, well, so I heard that's about actors that tried out for the Sopranos to be one of the mobsters. And David Chase or someone said, you know, we're going to make you the cop or the, you know, the chef or whatever. And they were a bit bummed out at first. <laughs> like, right. Oh, well, well, be well, one well, of the cool mob guys, but, you know, as if you got to knock the roll back. One of the best guys, right. Artie Bucco. He's, he's, he's yeah, well, Artie, Artie was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got beat up, slapped, his restaurant <laughs> burned down. <laughs> yeah, he, he had a rough trot, the poor yeah. fellow. He but got uh, <laughs> torn out. Yeah. yeah, he got bashed up by the French dude. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. But, 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 but again, but again that's, that's kind of like, like you know, of like, like, you know, believe in what you do. And, 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 and I, I like, like diversity. My, my career has been so blessed, has been a diverse Italian American actor that I couldn't ask for a better career. You know, I really couldn't have, like, and my diversity of my roles. And I'm proud of that. And I emphasize that. And I try to teach younger people that be diverse. Yeah. Don't, Don't try, try to be, be one note. If you're, you're a big, big muscle, muscle guy, guy, try, try to, to do different things. things. If you're a big, heavy, heavy set Italian guy, try and do different things. things. Don't always go for the, 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 the easy way. Oh, it's a prompt gangster. Or whatever, whatever it may be. You know, big guy, you're a bodyguard. No, think of, think of yourself as, as, as other stuff, stuff. And guess, guess what? what? It, it will happen. happen. Your yeah. mind will move will, will move it forward, you know? That's great yeah. advice. Great advice. Nah, well, thank you. Well, yeah, um, Thank you. Mate, we'll let you go, but I can't thank you enough for yeah, coming thanks, on the so, show. So. Um, it's yeah, man. I've been excited all week. Yeah, uh, it's been awesome, mate. Thank to you. Talk to you. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Mm. Oh, well, well, thank you. Did I eat much gabagool? 
Oh, oh God. God, there's that. Oh God, now I know his bones are hard. Somebody says that. It's almost like the cuisine line when he said gabagool. <laughs> gabagool. But, but you know what? Let me tell you, you can, you can definitely follow with some of the stuff I'm doing on my Instagram, which is Lewis Lombardi. You can put the link up for that. Yeah. And my food, which is Lombardi Foods. It's another Instagram page. And you can see the progress of, of the company and me doing my stuff and me doing my food stuff. So you can go to yeah, Lewis we'll Lombardi. share these links on the, um, on the chat and um, as well as the, um, it's called We Funder, isn't it? Where yeah, it gives yeah, people yeah, the possibility to invest in Lombardi foods. Yeah, yeah and, not, and you can invest anywhere. anywhere. Like, you don't, you don't have, have to be a gazillion. You, you can invest 500, 1,000, 10,000, whatever you want. But the point is, is you become an ambassador and a brand ambassador to Lombardi foods. And you become part of the Lombardi family for such a small amount of money. So when you're out in the supermarkets and you're with your friends and family, you're going to be like, hey, I own this company. You know? And it comes Ownership and, and yeah, and I'm paying for it at the checkout because you own, own it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's when you gotta put, put it in your jacket, jacket pocket. <laughs> wink, yeah, wink. Exactly. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, and when I get, and when the, I get the food, food line back up and running, the frozen peas, and I'm on QVC and Amazon again, 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 I will hit you guys up. We will talk about the progress of that. But you follow my Lombardi's food page. Yes, for sure. Yeah, and yeah, then and if the, the show goes, the, the show, show comes back, back and we and shoot in Australia, we're gonna come to your restaurant, Daniel. Come, 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 come on down. I love it. We'll sort that out and bring you here, we'll and um, you, mate. we will get uh, the expert's opinion on these fucking buns. <laughs> 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 hey, Damien, next, next time he comes in, in hey, Damien, look, look, make his make bun, bun spicy. spicy. Like, oh, 100%, mate. I got to put it in the oven for four hours first as well. <laughs> put it on the, no, put it on the, no, no, put it on the arm and a couple of spittoons in it. Two, two, two. I already do, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> In the Bronx, in the Bronx, in the Bronx if you fuck with someone's food, food, dude, those Italian, Italian guys in the pizzerias and shit, they, they will kill you. You'll you'll be, you'll be banned. You'll be like, like you'll be like, you'll be like Trump, Trump on Twitter. Twitter. If you complain about pizza, pizza in the Bronx. Bronx. <laughs> you'll never. <laughs> no one. We, have, we haven't got there yet, but I reckon we can push it to that. <laughs> well, good, guys, it's been a great conversation, man. Yeah, thank you very much, Louis. I can't thank you enough, as I said, and uh, we'll talk soon. Cheers, Mike. Yes. yes. Goodbye, guys. Yeah, Enjoy. Enjoy. Enjoy the bun. Enjoy, Enjoy his bun. Enjoy, Enjoy his crispy bun. bun. <laughs> I've got to get one shortly. All right, guys. Have a great, have a great day. day. See you, brother. Cheers.